We're finally here. Astra has finally made it to the propulsion testing. If you've been following the channel, then you'll remember that we're building a rocket called Karma, which we're hoping to launch in October at Yurok. And we've been hard at work at many of the subsystems of the rocket, including the recovery, the separation, the structure, the electronics, and many other parts. But there's one part that we've kind of been neglecting. And that's, of course, the propulsion testing. Now, there is a good reason for this. After all, the propulsion system is kind of the most expensive and also the hardest to get right. So better to kind of take your time with it. But right now, time is short, the chips are down, and we just got to make this thing work. One of the difficulties with performing propulsion testing is just finding the right location. It's all about location, location, location. Astra has performed a lot of its other testing in somewhat unconventional ways where we just kind of use the spaces that we have available to us. But with propulsion testing, you can't really do that. Otherwise, you might piss off the neighbors. Why does it have to be so loud? So to solve this location issue, we decided to work with DLR, which is the German Aerospace Center. And they have a couple of locations where one might be able to perform some propulsion testing in Germany. And the place that we ended up going is called DLR Lampelshausen. This is a location that's just about an hour north of Stuttgart. And it's really interesting because this is where Ariane Space tests a lot of its rockets. Half the facility is basically devoted to their stuff. Unfortunately, this location is about six hours away from Bremen. So we had a long drive ahead of us to get all our stuff all the way down to Lampelshausen. When you're slightly new to the propulsion world, it's a good idea to start a little slowly with your propulsion tests. Keeping this in mind, our first step to our propulsion test was to perform what's called a cold flow. As we've discussed in some of our previous content, Karma is a hybrid rocket which uses nitrous oxide as the oxidizer and paraffin wax as the fuel. But in order to get that nitrous oxide into our combustion chamber, it has to flow through the injector. And a somewhat safe way to test that the injector and the feed system is all working properly is to basically run that nitrous oxide through the injector with nothing else on the other side. You can also do a little bit of diagnostics with how your injector is performing to see what you expect with the propulsion for the rest of the testing. In our case, we had two different injectors that we wanted to test. One was just a shower head design and the other one is an impinging design. And if you've watched our video about uh, how we made those injectors, you can see exactly what makes those two different. In our case, we just wanted to see which one would be performing better and basically use that for the rest of the testing. Now I have to apologize a little bit because despite our best efforts to have all our cameras rolling for these cold flowing activities, uh, we had some issues with keeping the cameras on. See, it turns out that despite it being a cold flow, it was actually really, really hot. Pretty much everywhere, it's gonna be hot. Our cameras kept basically dying in the heat and shutting off, <laughs> usually right before the cold flow is about to happen. Unfortunately, all we really have for camera data is a little bit of cell phone footage that was taken of our impinging injector. But what I can say is that after this testing, we were pretty confident that the impinging injector was the best way to go. And we're really happy with the performance of it. You can see here that we're getting nice impinging flow that is generating some really cool effects with that nitrous oxide. Mm -hmm. So we're here on the Thursday, which is our fourth day here at Lampelshausen. So this is like the last test we're doing before we actually do the hot fire. We've done some cold slowing yesterday, or the day before actually, and everything was working well. Here we're just connecting the uh, igniters inside of the combustion chamber, and we're going to fire them and see if they're working properly. So in your sequence, you have uh, five seconds today, right? Then, uh <laughs> Wow! Let's do that again! Five, four, three, two, one. Is something supposed to happen? 
but right now we're having a bit of a problem. Uh, we set everything up and we hit the big red button and nothing happened. So embarrassing. <laughs> we have to check if it's an electrical problem or maybe they were set up in the combustion chamber wrong. For now, we think that it might just be an electrical issue. So we're gonna kind of retry and maybe uh, take off some pieces of our of our original setup. Like we have a lot of uh, double safe systems. So we might just remove the arming, one of the arming switches, because it's kind of a long cable. It could be interfering with uh, the current that we are actually getting through the wire. It seems like it's not the case, but you never know. Uh, although to be completely honest, we're a bit confused right now. 90% of the time I have no idea what the fuck I'm talking about. So uh, we're gonna kind of try to keep trying things and hopefully it works eventually. Something went off, I think. Because you can see at the igniters, the, the grain is kind of, it doesn't look normal. Like you can see this. Finally, we decided to check that the fuses inside of the solid motors themselves were actually firing. To do this, we tested an identical set of fuses just to see if it was working. As you can see here, the fuses themselves are actually not igniting, which means that we need more voltage. Originally, we had the entire igniter system going at 5 volts, which was enough for the balcony testing, but it looks like that's not quite enough in this case because we do have longer wires going all the way to them. So we had to up the voltage up to 24 volts, which is the same line that we were controlling our main valve with. One. Yes. Perfect. Perfect. Okay. So 24 volts. Okay. We just figured out what the problem with the igniters were. We actually didn't quite have enough voltage on the line. We were doing it with 5 volts. It was working great when we did our testing before because we had shorter cables and a slightly different setup. But apparently that wasn't quite enough. Now we're rewiring everything for the 24 volts, and hopefully we'll have a successful ignition. A few moments later. Sorry, Achtung, Achtung. Eine Minute Warnung am Stand, MR5. Okay. Then you're good to go. Is it Leon? Step. Five, four, three, two, one. That's what I'm talking about! So at this point we've verified all the major systems. We know that the injector is working properly with the cold flow. We know that our igniter is working properly and we will get a successful ignition of the rocket once we start flowing the nitrous oxide into the rocket. So now the only thing left to do is just to light the rocket. Now we still wanted to take things a little bit slow because of course this is our first propulsion testing. So for our first hot fire, we're just going to light the engine for two seconds. This means that the valve that we're using to control the nitrous oxide flow will only be open for two seconds. It took us a little while to prepare for this test because we actually had to take out the grain that we just used for the igniter test and put in a new one. The way our combustion chamber is set up, we actually need to remove the nozzle in order to make this grain switch. We designed our combustion chamber to be able to perform this type of action quickly, but it still takes a little bit of time. Okay, then test time is 11. We yeah. can we can move back, but we try to make it, but to make too long. Don't, okay. don't rush. Uh, I want the casing off so that we can get this thing off. Yes. Yeah. Do you want to remove the bottom bolts? I want all the bolts on the bottom. Yeah. 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 Good, good, good. Uh, oh, okay. oh, 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 And one thing that was ever present in our minds was the time limits that we had on the site. Because it was the summertime and it was blazing hot, there was actually a really high fire risk for the area that we were in which means that we're actually only able to test the rocket between the hours of 8 a.m. and 3 p.m. 
This is just part of what the facility was allowed to do based on the regulations of the area. We also had limitations on when we could test based on what the test schedules of other test sites were in the area. There's actually only one fire brigade for the entire Lampelshausen facility, which means that that fire truck can only be in one spot at a time. So if a bigger test site is testing, we basically wouldn't be allowed to test even if we're ready. So we really had to do a good job of planning when we would be ready to actually perform our testing so that we could accurately book a slot that we could actually have the fire brigade come and be there for. So if you look a little stressed while we're doing this whole procedure, now you know why. Basically, if you miss that slot, it's tough luck and you gotta try tomorrow. But finally, after a couple of hours of disassembly and reassembly, we are finally able to get the whole thing ready to perform the test. We just had our hot fire <laughs> and it worked pretty well. We had our chamber pressure uh, go from about 26 bar up to 31 bar. Uh, we don't have data off of the force sensors that is accurate, something kind of went wrong with that. So we're gonna be looking into that uh, a little bit more. But the flame out of the rocket engine looked pretty nominal. Uh, the, fl the expansion ratio looked really well. Uh, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> it's all gone really well. And I'm honestly really surprised that that's actually the case because like, uh, there's so many things in our assembly that could have gone wrong. So the fact that it actually made it through the two seconds without, you know, blowing up, rupturing or something like that, uh, is quite good. So I'm really proud of the team. Uh, it's been a really long time to get to this point. So I'm hoping that we can continue building on that and get ourselves up all the way to the full duration burn. We're gonna tear it apart, take a look at what's inside and see if there are improvements we can make and then hopefully be back tomorrow to do a little bit of a longer burn. Be sure to stay tuned for part two of our first propulsion testing campaign. And remember to expand your horizons. <laughs>